There are a few form attributes that we haven't introduced yet. In this video, we'll learn about some of the less commonly used features of HTML forms. One thing we haven't covered yet is the concept of browser focus. So when you click on a form element, you'll see that it gains the focus of the browser. And you can see this by the blue outline that it has, at least in Google Chrome. In other browsers, this will look slightly different. You can adjust the browser focus by clicking on another element, or you can also use the tab key to tab through different form elements, just like that. What would be nice is if we could adjust the order of this tabbing, and we can do just that using the tab index attribute. Let's go ahead and switch over to our text editor. The first element that we'll put our tab index on will be this input here. So we'll type tab index, and we'll give this a value of one. And we'll do the same thing for our text area here. So we'll say tab index, and we'll give this one a value of two. So now when we switch back to Google Chrome and refresh the page, when we hit tab, it will go from the first element to the second element, depending on how we set our tab index. Of course, this is the default tab order. So let's go ahead and switch around those numbers and see what happens. So we'll put a two on the input, and we'll put a one on the text area and we'll save. And when we go back to Google Chrome and refresh, when we hit tab, you can see that the text area is the first form element that gets selected. And if we hit tab again, it will actually jump back up to the input. The next attribute we're going to take a look at is the disabled attribute. Sometimes when you have more dynamic forms that use JavaScript, you might be selecting a checkbox and that checkbox will have some logic applied to it that will disable other checkboxes. So let's go ahead and switch over to the text editor. We're going to go ahead and just disable our input here. And to disable an element, you just type the attribute disabled. You don't need to give it any value. And we'll switch back to Google Chrome and refresh the page. And you can see that we now cannot click on the first form element, but we can click on any of the others, just like that. A similar attribute to the disabled attribute is the read only attribute. So let's go ahead and switch over to the text editor. And we'll change disabled to read only. And again, this doesn't have any value. We'll go ahead and add the value attribute to our input so that we can have a default value when the page loads. For our value, we'll say, I'm sorry, Dave. And we'll switch back to Google Chrome and refresh. And you can see when we try to click on this input, we can't actually select it, even though there's a value already there. That about wraps things up for HTML forms. They don't do much on their own, but when augmented with CSS, JavaScript, and server-side programming, they become very useful.